Hi everyone, my name is Doris Chang and today I will be talking about a topic that is near and dear to my heart, statistical learning. Um, having studied statistics for several years now, I think that it's such a relevant field in today's society, especially with the massive explosion in data generated by both companies and individuals like you and me. So without further ado, I present to you Statistical Learning 101, where I will be demystifying KNN and K-means to you guys. So the agenda today includes four main things, an introduction to statistical learning, two simple algorithms that you can use to better understand data sets, and then a JavaScript dem demonstration of k nearest neighbors, or KNN. So what is statistical learning? The main goal of statistical learning is to study the problem of inference. It's a subfield of mathematics that deals with finding relationships among variables to predict an outcome. That is, given a data set, how can we construct a model to gain a deeper understanding of the data to make better decisions? So in the example model on the left, we want to approximate the mapping function so well that when you have new input data x, you can accurately predict y. So why is statistical learning important anyway? As I mentioned earlier, we currently live in a data-driven world. Whether it's from communicating via social media or simply using our GPS-equipped smartphones, we're generating data everywhere we go. In fact, 90% of all data today was created in just the past two years. That's 2.5 quintillion bytes of data per day. So this is where statistical learning comes in. Statistical learning helps us make sense of all this data, and we can leverage our discoveries to make better decisions. For example, it can help us with classification problems such as image recognition, like Facebook's auto tag feature where you upload an image with friends. It can also help us with prediction problems, trained on historical data, whether models can forecast the data for future, for future dates. It can also help us with generation problems. Trained on past data, many gaming companies can analyze previous moves of a player and generate new levels as the player loves, levels up in rank. So one thing to note before I jump into the rest of my slides is the difference between statistical learning and machine learning. They might sound similar and they have similar goals of learning from data, but the key distinction is that they belong to different schools. As I mentioned before, statistical learning is a subfield of mathematics, which deals with finding relationships between variables to predict an outcome, while machine learning is a subfield of computer science, which deals with building systems that learn from data. So statistical learning has been around for centuries, but machine learning is actually a pretty recent development that came into existence in the 1990s with the advancements of technology and computers. So it provides data scientists the ability to move from building models to training computers to do so. So there are two types of statistical learning, supervised learning and unsupervised learning. You can think of supervised learning as taking a practice test when you check answers, where you can check answers if you get stuck. In supervised learning, if you're given a data set where for every observation x, there is also an associated response y. So the goal is to fit a model that relates the response to the predictors. In unsupervised learning, for every predictor x, there is no associated response y. So you're kind of working blindly. And the goal is to understand the underlying data structure or data, the underlying structure and distribution of the data. So k nearest neighbors, k nearest neighbor is a widely used supervised, supervised classification technique. It predicts the category or class of an unknown data point based on the most common class of k nearest neighbors. In the image below, you can see that a data has three types of categories. The gray point, which is unknown, can either belong to the yellow category, the green category, or the orange category. And let's say that for this algorithm, we assign k to equal 4. So we want to look at the four closest data points to the gray point determine the most common class, and assign that class to the unknown data point. So if k were equal to 5, you would look at the 5 closest points. And if k were equal to 6, then we would look at 6 um, closest points, and so on. So here we are calculating the differences between the gray point and the other points. And as you can see on the fourth image, you can see that the gray point is ultimately assigned the class yellow, because 2 out of 4 are yellow, while the while one is green and the other one is orange. So here's another example of KNN in action. So given this data set of two different types of fish, 
we want to assign a class to the unknown type of fish. So k in this example is 5, and the unknown point will be this yellow point. So you find the five closest neighbors, which, is, which are these five, and it's all light blue, so we assign this yellow point to light blue. If the unknown point was over here, then we would find the five closest neighbors, and three of them are dark blue, while two are light blue, so we can assign this unknown point as light blue, I mean as dark blue. So different k values can return different results. So the main challenge for KNN is finding what the optimal k value is to give you the most accurate result. So what if you have no knowledge about the given data set? For example, in the previous example, we knew that there were two different groups, but what if you didn't have any idea, well, what if you don't have any idea of how many groups there are in a data set. And so that's when you use k-means clustering. k-means clustering is used to find groups which have not been explicitly labeled in the data set. It's an unsupervised clustering technique that partitions the data into k-distinct homogeneous subgroups or clusters. So here's the same problem, but now you don't know that there are two groups. But let's say that k equals 2, and in this case, k is different than the other example. For here, k means k equals 2 means that you think that there are two groups in this data set. So you want to find out where the two different clusters are. And so the first step would to be to place two points at random locations. So here's a green point and here's an orange point. And these points will be called the initial centroids. And for each observation, we will find the centroid closest to it and assign it to that centroid's cluster. So all the points that are closer to the green centroid will be assigned to the green cluster. And all the points closer to the orange centroid will be assigned the orange cluster. And after that, you recalculate the centroids by calculating the mean values of their respective clusters. So right now, you can see that Initially, these are what the k-means thinks the two different groups are. But as you move the centroids over, then you reassign based on which point is closer to which centroid. And now the group is divided like this. And you repeat the process by reassigning and recalculating the centroids until convergence. So now that you have a basic understanding of two algorithms, I will demonstrate how to implement one of them, k-nearest neighbors, in JavaScript. Before I do my demonstration, I just want to say that JavaScript isn't the preferred language among data scientists when it comes to data analysis, mainly because languages like R and Python have so many more packages that are optimized for statistical learning and make use of GPU, so it performs very quickly. But in a few seconds, I am going to show you that it's not impossible to run statistical algorithms in JavaScript, and you don't need to require a library to do so. Um. So this is my code, and this is the data that we are going to be analyzing. This is a pretty famous data set that a lot of people start with to analyze or begin statistical learning with. And this is the iris flower data set. It has 150 observations. And basically, we're going to run KNN on these four different x variables, sepal length, sepal width, petal length, and petal width. And this is the y variable. So this is the type that type of flower or iris that this observation is. So uh, I'm going to run this KNN algorithm on 147 observations. And I'm going to try to predict um, three different points. I'm going to try to predict this type based on these values. So here are the steps of my algorithm. First, I'm going to push each point from the data set into a node list. So each object in the data array will be, so this object will be converted into a node. Then I will pick the k value to run my knn. Then I will measure the distances between the unknown point and every known point. 
sort them from smallest to largest, find the k closest neighbors to the unknown point, and then determine the type of the unknown point based on the most common type of its neighbors. So here's the node constructor that um, will represent a single observation from the data set. So it just iterates through the keys, and ultimately, it would kind of look something like this. For an unknown point, then I would say that this type is false. This is the node list that will hold all the different nodes. And I just added some of these methods onto the constructor. And so here's an add list where it takes in a new node, and it'll push it onto the node list. And this assign a known function, I think is the most important function that will basically guess the class of unknown node. And so basically what this is doing is first it'll calculate ranges, which will normalize the data points and adjust for discrepancies. Then I'll look through each node to see if there's an unknown type. And then it will push all the other values or other neighbors into a neighbor's array. And then for each unknown node, it'll calculate the node's distance to every other node that has a known type. It'll sort these distances, and then it will ultimately console log this class of node. And so these are just the calculate ranges function. This is the measure distances. This normalizes the values. And then this is the sort by distance. It basically takes two inputs and it returns the distance between these two points. And then this is my guess type function. And basically, basically, um, when I run this function, it will output this. And I'll say that um, for, for example, this would be k equals 4. It's looking at four closest neighbors. And it's saying that one of them is type iris setosa. One of them is iris virginica, and the other one is iris versicolor, and it says that two of them are actually actually belong to this. So we're going to classify the unknown type as this type. And so this is my run function, which will run everything. So right now, I have k equals 3. And I am going to input this first unknown node, which would be type iris setosa. So if I run everything, it outputs Aristotosa. And you can see that three of the closest neighbors are all, all of them belong to this type. So if I actually change k to um, 50, we can see and input this new data point. So hopefully, it would output Iris Versicolor. Uh, oh, oops. Here is false. So now it's saying that 42 of the neighbors for this point is Iris Versicolor, <laughs> while 8 of them is Iris Virginica. So therefore, it correctly determines that this unknown node is actually Iris Versicolor. And when you try to guess this type, Iris Virginica, and let's put this type false for unknown, then you can see that Oh, I guess that means, since it's 25 and 25, it's not the optimal k value. So let's change it to 10. No, actually, 11. So you can see that it correctly classifies this unknown node as Iris Virginica. So that is the end of our den demonstration. and. If any, hopefully you guys learned a lot about KNN and K-means. And if anyone tries to tell you that you can't actually do statistical learning in JavaScript, you can prove them wrong. <laughs> Thank you.